Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. This is the time of year where we're all asking ourselves how we're going to get to this holiday season healthy with the big meals and all the parties that we're going to be going to. How do we get through it by not gaining 900 pounds? <laughs> and so, of course, we invited today's show's nutritionist, Joy Bauer, who is the best at this. She knows everything. This is her second visit with us. And all of your questions uh, for Joy are, are very exciting because they're, every one of them is my question. So I'm really happy that you're here <laughs> oh, today. Oh, thanks for having yeah. me here. I love the questions. Yes, good. Great. Okay, so here we go. We've got so many. We've got to get started. Um, this is from Louise. Hi, Louise. What are some healthy holiday meals for the whole family? Last year, my husband and kids and I were in a food coma <laughs> for days after the holidays, and I don't want that to happen again. So the first thing I'm going to say right off the bat is to front load your meal with vegetables. You want to put out a crudite, any kind of delicious vegetables from sugar snap peas to baby carrots to green beans to broccoli, cauliflower, and serve it with an interesting dip. Black bean dip, spicy salsa, and edamame hummus. And then put some sort of a appealing salad on everybody's plate as well before you get into the main meal. And that's because the combination of water and fiber in the vegetables starts to fill you up and expand. So uh -huh. it's going to take the edge off your hunger and you're, it's likely you're going to eat less when you get to the main meal. But when you get to the main meal, there are lots of things you could do. You can have a roast turkey, roast pork tenderloin, spinach lasagna with low-fat cheese, and go crazy on the side dishes. Right. Roasted Brussels sprouts, um, green beans with slivered almonds, right, um, sweet potato mash instead of the regular mashed potatoes. So you what really... You, oh, I, oh, sweet potatoes better than regular potatoes. Well, I like white potatoes as well, but um, you could do are mashed potatoes fattening? using sweet potatoes. No, the calories are just about the same. Uh -huh. You get a little bit more potassium and beta carotene with the sweet potato, uh -huh. but nothing against white potatoes because yeah. you can make a mean, delicious, nutrient-dense mashed potatoes using white as well. Just okay. keep the skins on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the yeah. skin. This is from Syracuse. What are some healthy Thanksgiving meal options? We still want to make the traditional stuff. But is there any way to cut calories out of the mashed potatoes and stuffing ah. that my family loves? I'm trying to be more conscious of calories to my family's dismay. See, I love this question, and I'm going to zone in on the mashed potatoes. So the first thing, like we just mentioned, keep the skin on your mashed potatoes because you're going to bump up the fiber, which uh -huh. is going to keep you feeling fuller. And then when you mash it, do half white potatoes and half steamed cauliflower. Uh -huh. You mash the two together, oh, you're going to get the same volume, but dramatically reducing the calories. Use skin milk or 1% milk instead of whole milk. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to adding butter, because I'm all for butter, mm -hmm. you want to use whipped butter instead uh -huh. of the solid butter because it's more aerated, so there's fewer fat calories, oh, saturated great. fat. And when um, you say put the skin in, you mean chop the skin up in the yeah, mashed potatoes? Yeah, mash it right up. Oh, wow. Yeah, so when you boil your potatoes or if you nuke your potatoes in the right. microwave, don't peel them first. Just Perfect. chop it all up together and great. you get a lot of fiber. It, there's a lot of iron in there too, isn't it? Yeah, there's some and, iron. And, yeah. This is from LMT. Can you give some tips on how to stay the same pant size between late November and early January? I really want to try to not gain weight this year during the holidays. This is a huge, huge I mean, I'm issue. already worrying about it. Right. And worry is good because yeah. when you focus on it, you right. know, you sort of put the halt on a lot of right. mindless eating. So what are some tips? We love tips. Okay. You want to selectively splurge. You want to pick a few festive outings and then give yourself some flexibility when you're there. So instead of turning the entire month into an all-out eating orgy, right. pick two or three or even four special holiday parties. Right. And when you get to those parties, follow my rule of one. You're going to have one of each delicious looking hors d'oeuvre, right. one plate filled with everything that you want, and one dessert. And then hit the gym in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, well, this is the same question, really. Uh, any a tips on how to get it. through holiday parties without overeating? I find myself at a party almost every other night in December. It's brutal. So what you're saying is pick the ones where you're really going to eat, and the other ones, right. what do you do then? The hors d'oeuvres are being passed, and this is not one of your four nights. Okay, you want to first show up in something fitted and fabulous because it's going to remind you <laughs> that you can't overeat. That's true. And I think you want to go out of your way to hang out with the talkers versus the eaters. Ah. Yeah, so the people that are waving their hands all over the oh, place, good that's idea. the talkers. Yeah, that's usually me that's waving their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. hanging out with you. Uh, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's good. And it's true. If you're wearing a sweatsuit, you eat a lot. But if you're wearing a... You know, right. if you're wearing something really tight. You, it's a, the constant reminder, yes, sometimes uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is from Tashi. Hello, Tashi. 
It seems like more physicians and dietitians are recommending a certain amount of fat in our diet, a shift from what was happening a few years ago. So how much fat should a reasonably healthy, good BMI 40-year-old woman have every day? Okay, so you're, you're pretty much at your normal weight for height and you're 40 years old. I say don't worry about fat. Worry about the amount of calories that you're eating. You should be eating somewhere between 1,200 and 2,000, depending upon genetics, your metabolism, and how much you exercise. And focus on the good fats, the unsaturated fats, like nuts and seeds and avocados and olive oil and canola oil. As long as your calories are in check, the fat and the sugar will just fall into place. Oh, that's great. That's encouraging. This is from Ruth Howley-Lowry. What does Joy think is the biggest factor that keeps people from losing weight? Hands down, attitude. Losing weight is 50% attitude. And unless you have an enduring and significant source of personal motivation, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you got to figure out why you want to lose weight and you get up every single morning and remind yourself yeah. about your motivation. Mm -hmm. It's the can-do yeah, attitude. That's right. That's great. That's true about everything. That's about right. your work, about your family life, you know, what, you know, how much am I going to get done this week of this, you know? You're right. And, and having a plan, you know, yeah. you want to do some, some pre-strategizing. Right. But, I mean, losing weight, what, what is it really? It's eating less and it's right. moving more. But you got to make up your mind that you're going to do it day after day and it's going to happen. And also it helps to know which are the things that I really should stay away from, like bread. Because I'm like a your eater. trigger foods. Oh, yeah. I love bread. And the minute I sit down and the bread basket is there, I can have two or three pieces of garlic bread like that. Right. And for me, it's chips. One yeah. chip it, is a thousand I know, chips. I know. So you got to know your trigger That's foods. Right. You make your list and just get them out I of the house and out of your life until it. you feel more in control. Oh, I know. It's, it's really, it's, you got to do it. I this like is, vanilla ice cream, uh, oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Full <laughs> disclosure. <laughs> yeah. This is from Henrietta. What foods contain hidden calories? I heard squash has more calories than potatoes. Is this true? No, you know, um, the winter squashes, acorn squash, butternut squash, they have just about the same amount of calories as oh. a white and a sweet potato. Uh -huh. But all of those things are so nutrient dense. So it's much more about the way you cook them. You can roast them, you can boil them, you can whip them with the right things. As long as you don't fry them, Right. they have so much goodness to offer. All People, those potatoes. Yeah. I thought white potatoes were a no-no now. No, white potatoes have a lot of great stuff. Uh, vitamin C, potassium. Really? It's, it's a high quality carbohydrate. Yeah. You just have to watch the amount right. and what you're putting on. You want to skip the sour cream and the right, butter exactly. or just go easy. Yeah. I like salsa on mine. No, yeah, I, I like potatoes. I, I love sweet potatoes. I do um, too. This is from Megan. What's a good way to boost your metabolism once you've hit a plateau? This is so important. Right. Especially after 40. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so give us a big tip here. So there are a few things, the good news, that you can do to boost your metabolism. Okay. The first one is without a doubt exercise. Now mm -hmm. when you do cardio exercise like walking or running or biking or swimming, mm -hmm. you're burning extra calories, which means you're boosting your metabolism while you're doing it and then for a few hours when you stop doing it. So that's right. great news. The other great thing is strength training. Just yes. two to three or four days a week, if you could do 10 to 15 minutes of whether they're planks or lunges or light weightlifting, right. that's going to increase your lean body mass, which will also bump up your metabolism. Mm -hmm. And from the food standpoint, the best thing you can do is incorporate protein with all of your meals. Because when you eat protein, you get a little bit of a rev in your metabolic rate, more so than carbs and fat. Right. So just make sure you have either eggs or low-fat dairy um, with your breakfast in the morning, even some nuts or seeds. And what do you think about uh, protein as in spirulina? Do you, does that count for you too? Well, there's not that much protein in spirulina, but even just a handful of grams is going to uh -huh. do the trick. You just the bottom line is you don't want to have an all carb meal. You right. don't want to have a bagel right. with jelly on it no, with no, some no, orange no. juice yeah. for breakfast. So I as long as you that by now. right, yeah. but some people are still confused. As long as there's protein with each of your meals, we're not talking about a high protein diet, but some type of protein you are going to help your metabolism. And there's also a cool new study that came out, and it shows that adding spice to your meals, meaning um, jalapenos or some hot sauce, also can give you a slight rev as well. Oh, great. And we'll take any bit we That's can get. That's right. Yeah. We certainly will. Okay. This is from Stephanie Ann. 
Joy, you look amazing. What kind of a oh. diet do you follow, and do you ever cheat or fall off the wagon? Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> um, yes, I definitely do. I have three kids, so, <laughs> I mean, pizza is inevitable, as is the vanilla ice cream. Right. You know, during the week, I am pretty strict with myself. I have in the morning a non-fat Greek yogurt and some fresh fruit. I usually do a big salad with the works for lunch, chicken and chickpeas and all sorts of vegetables and a light vinaigrette. I snack on fresh fruit. I'm a big nutaholic. Pistachios, almonds. Mm -hmm. And then for dinner, I like to concoct all sorts of interesting things um, because I just love cooking so much. But on the weekends, I loosen up. I definitely loosen up. And my whole philosophy is 90-10. 90% healthy, 10% fun. And normally my fun is glass of wine, <laughs> some ice cream, <laughs> occasional peanut M&M's. <laughs> so for the most part, I'm good, but yeah, I fall off the wagon. Sure, absolutely. This is from Slopey Eyes, 523. I work about 15 hours a day and I'm just too tired to cook when I get home. What are some easy, healthy dinner alternatives to fast food? I love this question because I think so many of us yes. fall into this category. Right. What I tell people to do is to come up with five simple, healthy, delicious meals that you can whip together in a flash. We're talking 15 minutes or less. And then make sure that you have the ingredients for some of those meals in your house at all times. So for me, it could be an egg frittata with vegetables, whatever I have in the house. Right. It could be a bowl of whole grain cereal with skim milk and sliced bananas. I make a grilled chicken parmesan in like seven minutes. Really? So easy. But these are some things. You yes. could even take a whole wheat penne pasta and make a um, lean ground turkey sauce with jarred marinara sauce while the pasta is cooking. Put the whole thing together, a little Parmesan cheese and a salad on the side, and you have a gourmet meal Absolutely. that took no time. But you have to know what your, your recipes are, make sure you have the ingredients, and you know instill them in memory. Right. I wanted to ask, we were talking about protein. Um, when I have a hard-boiled egg, I carry them around in my purse. Great snack. Yeah, it's a great snack. But I, I'm under the impression that I shouldn't eat the yolk that the yolk is fattening and the white is the protein. Am I right? Well, the yolk is definitely the more fattening part. Let's say an egg is about 70 calories. Uh -huh. The white is pure protein and it's only 17 calories. Uh -huh. So you can have a huge amount of egg whites right. for under 100 calories, whereas you know the calories rack up a little bit more quickly when you eat the yolk. The thing with the yolk is there, there is some good stuff. There's iron in the yolk. There's some vitamin D in mm -hmm. the yolk, and a lot of people are deficient in D. Right. There's also saturated fat. So I usually say one whole egg with two to three egg whites, and that's a perfect snack right. or meal or breakfast. Right. So if I'm taking an, a, a high-rolled egg in my bag, I probably should get rid of that yolk. Yeah. Just eat the whites. And more than one, because that's not going to fill oh, yeah. you up. Right, you know, right, right. three, four. Well, I mean, it's instead of a Snickers is what I do. No, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. Which is which is my the thing I think about almost all the time. You ever, you ever take an egg white and stuff it with hummus? Oh, yes. Are you mm. kidding? I love it. And a little sriracha yes, sauce. it's wonderful. It's just not good in my purse. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Alex Ray Stevenson. Hi, Joy. Now, this is a great question. Okay. Is there a correct way to read nutrition labels? What ingredients should not be in the top few ingredients, and what ingredients are a definite no-no? Well, the ingredients that are a definite no-no are going to be anything hydrogenated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hydrogenated vegetable oil is a red flag, but there's some trans fat in that product. Right. And we know that trans fat elevates the bad cholesterol, right. it lowers the good cholesterol, right. and promotes inflammation. Another um, ingredient that I don't love is high fructose corn syrup, uh -huh. or corn syrup for that matter. In all fairness, it doesn't really act any different in your body than sugar or honey, but I think it's more processed, and why not go for things that are a little bit cleaner? Right. It's in a lot of stuff, though, isn't it, corn syrup? It's in everything, and it tends to be in the more junky foods yeah, right. because it's cheap and it's readily available. Right. and it's sweet. But I think a hot thing to look at now on a nutrition label would be sodium. Mm -hmm. And and mainly in the as a no no. Well, to make sure that the numbers are low, uh -huh. because a lot of like the processed snack foods that we're buying, crackers and right. chips, are really high in sodium. Right. So you want that number to be, I would say, 180 milligrams or less for sodium. Now, when it says low sodium, is that okay? Because I always worry when something is says low something, meaning what do they put in instead? 
Well, a lot of times they're just fooling around and experimenting with delicious seasonings, herbs uh -huh. and other things. Right. Um, low, so, no, low sodium is, is a good thing to Right. Um, uh, so I shouldn't worry register. if they put something else in. It's like, it's like they take out sugar and put in a right. sugar substitute, and that's almost as bad as the sugar. Right. That's another thing. Yeah. I'm not into artificial sweeteners. Right. I'm not, I'm not even either. into stevia, which uh -huh. is a sugar substitute as well. Right. I would so much rather go for the real McCoy right. and just try to minimize the intake. Mm hmm this is from Debbie T. Hi, Joy. What are the best kinds of cooking oils to use when stir-frying or even making an omelet? With high heat cooking, like stir-frying, I would say canola oil or grapeseed oil. They both do really, really well. They're neutral. They're not going to change the taste. Not olive oil. Over. Well, olive oil for an omelet, I, I'm, I'm not sure that that's... Um, no, I mean for the stir-frying. You like the canola or the grapeseed. I like olive oil a lot too, but for the higher temperatures, uh -huh. I would go for the grapeseed or the canola oil, okay. and they're great for baking as well. And mm -hmm. I think um, something, a, a great tip to add here is to use an oil mister, because when you pour your oil in a reusable oil mister, you spray the oil on the pan, and you can dramatically cut back on the amount of fat calories that you're oh, adding great. into a recipe. Yeah, great. you can pick them up anywhere for about fifteen dollars. Sure, that's great. Uh, Doris, what's the best thing to eat for breakfast? I've heard conflicting things. Some say protein, some say fruit, some say yogurt. But you said earlier, whatever you're eating, put protein with it. And specifically when it comes to breakfast, because we've got compelling research that shows when you incorporate some sort of protein into the morning meal, mm -hmm. you feel more energized, you feel more satisfied with your appetite, so right. you're less apt to overeat later in the day, and you just have more overall energy. So that protein would be nuts and it would be eggs? Eggs, nuts, seeds. I mean, for people that can't give up the bacon, it would be turkey bacon, right. nitrate-free. It could be Canadian bacon, which right. is super lean. And also low-fat dairy. Um, I love non-fat Greek yogurt. I like low-fat cottage cheese, mm -hmm. even part skim ricotta cheese. Oh, that's if you great. could eat tofu in the morning, that's a great yeah. protein. Uh, tofu, and I have never been good friends, but... I could even eat a bowl of lentil soup in, for breakfast that. in the morning. I love lentil soup. Uh, well, well, well and, and certainly granola, right? Well, granola is carbohydrate, uh -huh. so that's carbohydrate. There's and all those nuts in there. Right. Well, well there's more oats than nuts, uh -huh. depending oats. upon what kind of granola yeah, you're right. getting. There's a lot of great brands on the market right now. The only thing with granola is you have to be concerned about the amount of sugar right. that's going in. What's the brand you like? Um, kind just came out with a delicious new line of granola, and it has all sorts of interesting ingredients like quinoa and amaranth oh, and great. millet. Kind. Yeah. Okay, we'll and, get that. And the sugar is nice and low. Good, because that's another question: Is granola good for you? So there are some ones that are very good for you, and Kind makes one of them. Yes, and it's brand new. Oh, great! Uh, there's a good tip. <laughs> this is from Kathy. What are some candy bars that are okay for kids? <laughs> because this is, you've got to give your kid a candy bar every now and then. You know what? Any candy bar, just stick with the fun size. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what it is. In the case of candy bars, go for the one that you like the taste of, whether it's a Snickers or a Milky Ways or a Butterfingers or Twix. Just stick with the fun size and it's fine. Yes, that's great. Uh, yeah, it's great not to feel deprived all the time. No, yeah, yeah. and we can't make our kids nuts because yeah. you, it's going to backfire right. with a vengeance. They're going to eat it away from all. Yes, you'll start finding wrappers in their <laughs> backpacks. This is a storm. We, I, we have junk in my house, I promise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because I, I, I want to send a message that everything is okay, but some things, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We have way more of the good stuff. Right. But we do have some bad stuff good. sprinkled around. That's good. Uh, this is from Storm. I'd like to try a vegetarian diet, but I'm worried I'll miss my meat protein. Do you have any suggestions for substitutes? Or do you even believe in a vegetarian diet? Oh, absolutely. When you do it right. You know, uh -huh. you can't be a vegetarian and live on bagels and pretzels and white noodles right. and bread. But vegetarian diets are brilliantly nutrient dense and, and incredibly healthy for you and um, what I would tell you to do is really experiment with tofu because tofu is a blank canvas. It doesn't really have much of a flavor and it will take on the flavor of whatever marinade you mix it with. Uh -huh. So you can stir fry with it, um, oh, you could do all sorts of things. You could scramble it, you could bake it, so give it a shot and lentils and starchy beans are terrific as well. That's great, that's great. This is from Little Bee. 
What are some healthy alternatives for when I've got that craving for sweets that just won't go away? I've heard raisins in fruit bar, but I always, I mean, fruit, but I always want candy. <laughs> I found grapes help me. And they're, when they're frozen, yeah. they are delicious. Yeah. Yeah, they help me. And grapes clock in at about 100 calories a cup. So that's a really nice suggestion. Mm -hmm. You can also add a dollop of whipped cream on top of fresh fruit to make mm -hmm. it a little bit more interesting. Right, right. Dark chocolate, one ounce. I like to freeze mine. is only 150 calories, so that's nothing to feel guilty over, and it's really good for your um, blood vessels. Well, what's, what's a Snickers bar? How many calories is that? 280. Oh, wow. 280, and you know, it's got a lot of some of the unhealthy ingredients right, right, in it. Right. So when you look yeah. at a dark chocolate, and I usually tell people, get any brands you want when it comes to dark, just try to go for at least 70% cacao. And then you know you're getting the healthy flavonoids oh, and antioxidants. That's great. And this... there's also a lot of low-fat ice creams and frozen yogurts. Right. That you I, I don't eat much of. dairy, so I, I uh, use non-dairy ice creams, like uh, rice dream. I just found a delicious one. Here's a tip. It's so delicious, coconut milk ice cream just came out. Oh, great. Yeah. They just oh, sent great. me some samples, so oh, it should be I'll out in it. stores now, if not soon. That's I'll a really delicious that. one. Good. This person's name is Live Free Full Life. Okay. You sound good. <laughs> what are some tips for healthy snacks I can put in my kid's lunchbox? I won't buy Twinkies or Doritos or any of that stuff. Well, it depends on what you're defining as snacks. I, I know that the number one snack for kids, because I did a poll, is <laughs> chips. And fortunately, there are some really great whole grain companies out there that are making all sorts of oh, chips. Oh, great. So one is called Late July, and it's a good company because it gives back. Uh -huh. um, Tostitos just came out with an artisanal line, which is fabulous, low in sodium all sorts of interesting grains incorporated, like the quinoa we were talking right. about, and um, flax seeds. Great. So those are two uh, chips that I think are worth knowing about. Oh, that's great. I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope you get them to eat it, too. This is from Pam from Naples, Florida. I've heard a lot about the benefits of pomegranate juice, and I was wondering, is it all true? And how different is it from grapefruit or cranberry juice health-wise? Pomegranate juice has some nice research behind it when it comes to certain type of cancers, but at the end of the day, it's juice. So you're going to get a lot of sugar in a cup of pomegranate juice, like you are orange juice or apple juice or cranberry juice. I think that... Um, you know, certain exotic fruits, and I'm, I'll put pomegranate in that even though it's pretty mainstream right now, have gotten much more PR because there's big marketing campaigns behind them. But really, all of the different fruits, fancy or not fancy, have so much that they bring to the table um, that you don't need to spend a fortune uh -huh. getting all kinds of, you know, sort of under the radar, out of the box produce items. And I tend to, to pull back a little bit from recommending juice again because so many people right now have type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. so many people are trying to lose weight, right. and it's a lot of calories and a mm -hmm. lot of sugar in a glass. I yeah. tell people to eat their fruit versus drinking right, their fruit. Yeah. And pomegranate seeds are delicious. Yeah. I can't even uh, tolerate orange juice, but I love to eat an orange. And but you're it, so much better and, off. And it really gives me a stomachache to eat, to drink orange And when juice. you eat the fruit, because you're getting the fiber that's packed with it, yes. you get a nice, steady flow of your blood sugars. Mm -hmm. When you drink the juice, boom! Yeah, yeah. Because it's so concentrated right. in sugar. <laughs> right. And you could put com um, pomegranate seeds on a salad. Oh, that's right. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah that's delicious. Yes. This is from Denise P. Osteoporosis is a growing concern as we get older. What are some tips we can use? to keep our bones strong. Exercise, exercise for sure. Um, you know, of course, calcium is important, but I think vitamin D, as in David, is right. even more important because it's the nutrient we tend to not get enough of. You know, when our skin is exposed to the sun, mm -hmm. we automatically make vitamin D, but we're in the winter months and we're slathering right. responsibly all right. of the sunscreen on. So fatty fish, you know, we talk about fatty fish because of omega-3s, uh -huh. but fatty fish is the best place to get vitamin D and as tell well. tell us which fatty fish is. Wild salmon, whether it's fillets or canned, um, arctic char, sardines. Do you like sardines? No. I don't either. I wish that my I did. My mother loved them. My son, my 14-year-old yeah. son loves yeah. sardines. It's, a, it's an Italian thing. My mom was Italian and... Her whole family would put sardines on things and salads and stuff. She has no bone problems. Yeah. She's no longer alive, but she did. She, <laughs> she had good bones. Yeah, she did. She really <laughs> did. Uh, let me just see. We're, we're running out of time, and I want to try to get in as many as possible. Um, 
Diabetes runs in my family. Do you have any suggestions for taking preventative measures, diet, nutrition-wise? What can I do? Any tips for this? Absolutely. First, you want to exercise. Second, you want to make sure that you keep your weight in check. And third, you want to cut back on the starch at all your meals. Great. Wonderful. Um, this is another important question. This is from Tracy Seitz Renshaw. What could be done for belly fat? I had a baby at 16 and I really believe my muscles were stretched to their limit. No matter how many sit-ups or diets I do, the belly fat will not go away. Please help. Unfortunately, you cannot spot reduce. Your fat is laid down genetically where it wants to go. But the right. good news is if you lose fat all over your body by eating less and moving more, eventually it is going to come off your stomach. Sometimes skin is stretched and there's nothing that you can do right. short of surgery, but that's when I th say thank God for things like Spanx and yummy <laughs> tummy and undergarments. It is what it is. This is from Jackie. Are there any foods I can eat to help fight seasonal affective disorder depression? Yes. This and, is important. Yes, and the number one thing that you can do is eat foods rich in vitamin D, as in David, because we know through research that people that have seasonal affective disorder tend to have lower levels, and when they're given supplements or foods to increase their, um, um, their blood levels, they feel much better. So that's going to be your fatty fish, your wild salmon, whether it's fillets or canned. It's going to be your sardines, <laughs> yes, right. um, anchovies, arctic char. Also, egg yolks have some vitamin D. Uh -huh. Mushrooms have some vitamin D. And there are some fortified foods out there like And you do feel like good yogurts. about vitamin D supplements too, Absolutely, right? yeah. yes. And that's the kind of thing, speak with your physician. Yeah. Well, we're running, we ran out of time. I love her. You have, I have oh. so many more questions. I just wish I could answer them all, but I'll I know the time is up. You'll come <laughs> back anytime. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.